Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the British Embassy where we are covering everything autonomous. It's an autonomous uh, systems day here at the embassy. Everything from very small vehicles to mid-sized vehicles, land, air, sea. And we have with us, uh, reuniting the band as it, as it were, uh, Grant Stapleton who's from uh, Malloy Aeronautics, uh, the UK company that came up with the brilliant idea of the, of the hover bike, uh, the brainchild of uh, Chris Malloy, uh, who is a New Zealander, if I uh, remember uh, correctly, and uh, Mark Bukovic, who is uh, with Service, the American engineering firm that's partnered with uh, Malloy on this uh, on this great technology. Um, we met uh, two years ago at the Paris Air Show. You guys were on the way out uh, and were nice enough to go, having just left the air show, turn around and come right back through security to, to, to talk to us. Um, bring us up to speed on where the program is now, because at the time it was just a really, really neat uh, idea to take 300 pounds on this uh, quad rotor design and now you guys are working on something for both the United States Army, but also the Marine Corps. Bring us up to speed, Grant, on where you guys are on the program. Uh, well, now we have the TRV-50, which is the half-scale version of the original uh, TRV-300, which we, we call the full-size uh, hover bike. Uh, so this uh, is probably the best of breed, I would describe. It's got the best of all of the previous vehicles, but it's still part of the same family of hover bikes, uh, uh, you know, uh, with, this, with the same concept uh, that we originally started with, uh, with safety at the core and, uh, and just versatility, simplicity. Uh, inexpensive, simple, easy to use. Um, and you guys had a fascinating demonstration here at the embassy. We're in the rotunda uh, of the embassy, and you guys put on this great demonstration where you were able to drop two separate ammunition boxes off on one part on one side of the room and the other on the other side of the room. Mark, I want to go over to you. What are some of the things and the ways you're modifying this vehicle in order to satisfy uh, the Army and the Marine Corps requirements? And what are some of the things, you know, the Marines can't wait to get this thing into production. Talk to us a little bit about the capabilities and why the Marine Corps are so interested in the, in the vehicle. Well, I, uh, I will say that that um, it, it's not just about uh, building a, a larger drone, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, we're working on building a more intelligent, uh, more autonomous, more survivable uh, vehicle uh, that operates uh, both in a civilian capacity, but also in a tactical environment. So uh, that's kind of been our focus, right? If, if we uh, can solve some of the, the, the issues um, in, a, in a contested environment, then um, uh, the other problems are, are easier more easily solved. And uh, from a uh, p payload, obviously 50 pounds is what you guys are shooting for. What is the kind of range grant you guys get? You know, what kind of speed you're, are you getting? What kind of altitude do you get uh, with the system in order, you know, from for that tactical uh, last mile for resupply, if you will, uh, that you guys are shooting for? Uh, okay, with the present battery technologies and just using electric batteries as they are at the moment, we're getting about 50 mile an hour. Uh, we get about 10,000 feet of altitude. Uh, and a range of just under an hour uh, with no payload and with a full payload we're getting about 14 minutes but like I say that really is dependent on the battery so as battery technology uh, improves so our range is going to improve but we're also looking at, at, at other uh, power systems uh, that would in increase the uh, range on that. And, and that's about into a 20, uh, up to a 25 knot headwind? Uh, correct, yeah, but maybe even a little faster than that. Uh, it's, we, we've tested up to 25 knots and it seemed to manage that just fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it'll, and, and carrying uh, about 22 kilograms, so what, what, 50 pounds of, of payload. Right. Um, Mark, talk to us a little bit about some of the other iterations of this because it's a very, very flexible package. Uh, both of the rotor blades fold flat, so it actually folds into a very, very small package that can fit in a trunk. Uh, but you kind of, guys can also set these up into um, eight-bladed, six-bladed. Talk to us about sort of the flexible design you have here and how you can exploit it for different applications. Well, I, I, I will say I think that's one of the, the, uh, the strengths uh, of the, the platform and the design. Um, and so one of the benefits, as you, as you mentioned, that you know, we can easily turn this um, essentially quadcopter design into uh, a hexcopter design to an octocopter design. So we can go from a 50-pound payload capacity uh, up to 100-pound payload capacity with this variant, um, but all of the parts are the same. So you, you don't have to uh, have uh, you know, different motors, different battery packs as you grow the platform. So. Um, uh, you know that again. Well, that's one of the benefits, and is also the the commonality, right? If you, if if a, a part gets damaged in the field, uh, it's more easily replaced because you could you know take parts from some other platform and 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 uh, you know very quickly service that. 
Uh, Grant, you mentioned something that uh, uh, was very cool and almost out of a 60s uh, sci-fi movie, that this thing can actually come out of the water uh, and, and take off so that, well, I mean, submarine forces around the world are all interested in various kinds of unmanned systems that they can deploy uh, from the submarine so that to maintain stealth for the ship without having to necessarily surface. Talk to us about how this might be able to address that application because you said, you know, you, you, can, you have fully sealed electronics, you can actually come out of the water and then take off. Talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, sure. So, so uh, w working with uh, service engineering, we developed the um, uh, the uh, uh, small uh, little drone that you saw in the last footage we did uh, with you. That we actually had flying right out of the water, uh, and we just extended that. You know, people need a, a platform. Uh, the, the military need a platform that's weatherproof. Uh, it's got to be able to fly in the rain if it's going to serve uh, you know the needs uh, appro appropriately. And so, uh, in it's got to be waterproof. So uh, you waterproof it, then you can put it underwater, um, and it actually happens to work quite well um, so we're very proud of that uh, it's, a, it's a clever system for that uh, and and also the batteries are a flow through technology where uh, they don't mind getting wet talk to us a little bit about that mark uh, well I, I'm gonna have to really say that that's a, a Malloy innovation um, and uh, you know one of the things is using as, as much as practically possible uh, COTS technology so uh, they're using off-the-shelf batteries uh, but packaging them in a way that uh, basically is both uh, very lightweight but but also in a sealed unit uh, that's impervious to you know water and other elements uh, now um, I have to ask you about the manned uh, version of this, which was really one of the coolest things to see was the 300-pound uh, version. And one of the reasons you have this wasp-wasted technology is for it to be able to have a saddle on it and, and have somebody be actually able to pilot it, which I think was Chris's original vision for, uh, for the system. Um, you know, at the time, there was a little bit of uh, ho hopefulness there that, uh, that this, this would become uh, sort of a, a mode of transportation, sort of the future meeting us. Where are you guys on that? Because you guys are extremely busy trying to satisfy the work you have now. What's the status of the MAN program? Uh, it's still ongoing. Um, the the, uh, the MAN program is simply an extension of the unmanned program. Uh, you know, when you build a, a good, safe product, uh, it, you, if it is good and safe, then you can put a MAN on it. Um, so it's just, you know, we're in the process with that and, uh, and a natural consequence will, you know, the manned platform will come out of that. And uh, we're, we're all still excited about it. It's certainly not, uh, it's not stopped. It's uh, still very much uh, there and moving forward. So. Um, best of luck to you guys. I mean, this is the absolute very best in Anglo-American engineering cooperation. And it's really great and best of luck on it. Uh, best of luck on the unmanned side of the program and absolutely best of luck. You guys got to get on Jay Leno's garage or something if, once, you get that, <laughs> once you get that thing up and running. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> thank you, Vago. Grant, thanks very much for joining us. Mark, thank you. Thank you.